show us a spring in the desert where love can flow out. Lord, your love is full to the brim. Lord, your love's a cup running over. Lord, your love and heart is a river that rolls over us and calls us to join in the stream. Blessings on this sacred evening. My name is Elisa Lacozzi, pastor to the beloved community that is Guilford Community Church. We're glad you have joined us this evening as we break bread together and share stories of Jesus' last night and hear once again the great commandment he leaves us. I want to extend a welcome to everybody joining us for this service online. And know that although you aren't here in this space with us, you are in our hearts. For those of you who are worshiping with us from home, know that we will be sharing communion during this service, so you are welcome and invited to join in using whatever you have at home for communion bread or a cracker or a bagel or a corn chip, water or tea or a coffee or wine. My friends, especially on this night, let us lean into the joy of being together in all the many ways that we can. Let us gather worshiping God, offering prayers and our hearts and reflecting on God's word to us this most sacred night. Now let us begin by acknowledging that we are occupying stolen land, stolen unceded indigenous land, whether gathered at home or at this church building. Tonight, as we remember who, the person who blessed our feet, let us remember those who walked so lightly on this land. Let us walk as if each step blesses the homelands of the Sokoki Abenaki who have lived in relationship with this land for thousands of years and are still living here today. Tonight, as always, we offer them our gratitude and respect, our repentance and hope and solidarity with them. It is a holy communion we share of life on earth, of past and present, of pain and reconciliation, of mystery and majesty. Let us begin. Please join me in this call to worship. We invite you to bring your body into the worship of God. You may do so standing or seated by listening to your heartbeat or noticing the rise and fall of your abdomen with each breath. A call to worship is a call to presence we long to be fully present here and to feel God's presence here. 
Notice the space around us, the way it looks and smells and sounds. With all our senses, we recognize the sacred space and our belonging in it. We gather as good creation, wonderfully made. We join our bodies into one body as we remember the Our first hymn is Come My Way, My Truth, My Life, which was found in your bulletin. Please rise in body or spirit. Lead by Mary Oliver. Here is a story to break your heart. Are you willing? This winter, the loons came to our harbor and died one by one of nothing we could see. A friend told me of one on the shore that lifted its head and opened the elegant beak and cried out in the long, sweet savoring of its life, which, if you have heard it, you know is a sacred thing, and for which, if you have not heard it, you had better hurry to where they still sing. And believe me, tell no one, tell no one just where that is. The next morning, This loon, speckled and iridescent, and with a plan to fly home to some hidden lake, was dead on the shore. I tell you this to break your heart, by which I mean only that it break open and never close again. In a few minutes, we'll hear the story of Jesus washing the feet of the disciples on the night his betrayal and arrest. It is a story of deep intimacy and sacred connection. It is also a story about human resistance to God's grace and our discomfort with the ways that Jesus demands the disruption of hierarchies. In this story, Simon Peter first objects to Jesus' plan to wash his feet. Jesus does not rebuke him, but he does insist, for he knows what is to come. As we prepare to lay down our burdens before God in confession, 
We place our trust in God's desire to know us and be with us. As we enter into the sacred story of John's gospel, let us take a few moments to notice our feet. Take off your shoes if you wish. I have. Wiggle your toes. Plant your feet firmly on the ground. As you experience these sensations, consider the wonder of God who meets us not only from on high, but also kneeling at our feet. Confession returns us to our bodies by reminding us that God claims us exactly as we are. Through repentance, we name that which has left undone and ask for God's help in our community to seek repair, restoration, and renewal. So let us pray together this prayer of confession. Loving God, pour out grace upon us exactly as we are. But we confess we are suspicious and react from fear of scarcity. You invite us to take our shoes off and receive the care our bodies need, but we sit on our heels. We sort bodies into worthy and unworthy ones to mask our insecurities. We reject and punish fat bodies, disabled bodies, transgendered bodies, and radicalized bodies even when those bodies are our very own. God, remind us that we are made in your image. Help us learn to receive from your abundance so we can share all that we have with others. Let us see the cups we are longing hold out are already full. May they overflow so that all will have enough. As he does with Peter in the foot washing, Jesus transforms our confusion and rejection into joy and connection. With God's help and mercy, we can reciprocate abundance with one another and with creation. In Jesus Christ, we are loved and befriended by God. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is Take Your Shoes Off, an original hymn for our worship series you'll find in your bulletin. Please rise in body or spirit.
We are all going to now participate in a dramatic reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. I will be the role of the reader. Uh, Pastor Elisa will be the leader. And you are all the bold type. And you also, we will all join in a sung response. Could we just hear that, Peter? It was the day before the Passover festival. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. Jesus got up from the table, took off his robes, and tied a towel around his waist. Then Jesus poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel he was wearing. Jesus came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? Jesus answered Peter, You do not understand what I do now, but you will later. Peter declared, Jesus answered, If I do not wash your feet, you can no longer be my disciple. Simon Peter answered, Not only my feet then, hands and head too. Jesus said, those who have bathed are completely clean and do not need to wash other than their feet. After washing their feet, Jesus put his robes back on, returned to his place at the table, and said, Do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly, because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I have set an example for you, so that you will do just what I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their masters, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. 
If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. With simple elements and simple acts, Jesus flipped the scripts of power to bring about new possibilities for God's love in the world. Before his betrayal and death, Jesus touched his followers and sealed their connection. Jesus taught us to wash one another's feet so that we might witness each other's goodness. Love, take a walk with me love take a walk with me oh love take a walk with me and spirit guide my feet i invite you to bring your attention to your feet now again as we bless them. And you can hold out your hands to your own feet or somebody sitting next to you. Those of you at home, if you're seated in a way, you can hold your own feet. Go ahead. May our feet rest firmly on the ground and may our hearts know wherever we set our feet is holy land. Wherever your feet touch the earth, you know you are touching where someone has died or been born. May every step be a blessing. Bless the bloody toes of ballet dancers. Bless the scorched souls of those who live in hot climates and have no shoes. Bless the frostbitten toes of those who live in cold climates with warm boots. Bless the tiny feet of newborns, the feet of little ones learning to take their first steps, the feet of youth running towards independence, the tired feet of adults working to make ends meet, the feet of elders who have walked miles in their life and created a clearer path for those who come after them, the feet of those who need wheels or walkers to help them stand and continue to walk. Bless the weary feet of those who have walked miles for days and months to escape their countries, their homes torn apart by violence and destruction. Bless the exhausted feet of those marching, marching, endlessly marching for their rights, marching so that their humanity will be recognized, honored, and uplifted. Black feet and brown feet, size 13 feet clad in diamond-studded stilettos, Doc Martens or Birkenstocks, the feet of those who are the first to walk on this land we now occupy, the feet of those who too many times have had to run for their own life. May our feet carry us towards love. May we pray with our feet by marching for justice. And Holy God, who walks with us always, guide our feet into the path of peace. Love, take a walk with me. Love, take a walk with me. Oh, love, take a walk with me. And spirit, Guide my feet. This evening's pastoral prayer is entitled Watermarks. Jesus probably kneeled down. 
He probably took Peter's heels in his hands to wash his feet. And I wonder if they both thought of Jacob, the heel grabber, the trickster who wrestled with God. I wonder if it felt like a do-over, a fresh start for creation. I wonder if the basin overflowed when Jesus poured the water out. I wonder if it splashed, leaving watermarks on the floor, proof that love was really there. I wonder if I would let Jesus do the same. Would I have been like Peter and said, not my feet, but my head and my hands? I suppose I can look at my life today and answer the question, have I allowed myself to be loved? And are there watermarks on the floor? Our anthem this evening is Ubi Caritas. This is a table for all who are hungry. If you are hungry, come. Our compassion and our love are The love of Christ has gathered us as one. Let us love one another. Our compassion and our love are When we are gathered in spirit, even distance cannot separate us. Christ is present in our midst. For your compassion and love are greatest of Tonight, we remember the last night Jesus spent with his disciples celebrating the Passover meal. We remember that the early church would gather for agape meals or love feasts to remember Jesus' life and ministry. 
to affirm their communal identity as the body of Christ, and to share food and resources so everyone, everyone would have enough. God, who took on flesh and lived among us, we greet you in worship. We greet you as creator who made us good in our bodies. We greet you as a redeemer who was perfectly divine and totally human. We greet you as sustainer, as advocate, a helper who surrounds us in all the ways, in all our days. We come in our bodies, all sizes, races, genders, abilities, sexualities, ages, and appearances, so that we might join with your body as we encounter you tangibly through the bread and wine. Through this joyful feast, you fill our spirits to overflowing. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and As you nourish us through this holy meal, leave us hungry for your kingdom. Leave us thirsty for your justice that you pour out on the world. Let us encounter the bodies around us. Let us see you in the faces of strangers and friends, taste you in the sourness of grapes, hear you in the creaks of the sanctuary in the whisper of a breeze. Through Holy Communion, Teach us how to be for others as you are for us, sustaining help, loving accompaniment, eternal hope. Now let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us using whatever words help us to embody its promise. May we bring about one small glimpse of the kingdom of God, a kingdom where all are well, all are fed and free, we're all our whole. We're all no love. We're all know that they are beloved. Let us pray. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Here we are at a table. We come hungry for food and drink, for company and conversation, for God's spirit of hope, comfort, and peace for our wilderness journey. Jesus gathered around tables just like this one. He gathered with sinners and saints, religious leaders and tax collectors, the proud and arrogant, the self-deprecating and the uncertain, the filthy rich and the destitute, the healthy and sick, the young and old. We remember the last meal that Jesus shared with his disciples, remembering God's liberating power. And at that meal, he took a loaf of bread and he broke it. 
And he shared it with his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The table of the joyful feast is not our table, but God's. Nothing you do, nothing you say, nothing about you can prevent you from partaking. For in communion, God reveals the wholeness of who we are together and with God. So as you receive this joyful feast, come exactly as you are. There is more than enough. Come, for all is ready. This is the body of Christ, broken so that we may be made whole. And now our story continues. The Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 3, and 21 through 35. This is from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 3, and 21 through 35. Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to God. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal, a festival of love celebrating freedom, even as Jesus knew what was to come. The devil had already provoked Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew God had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. After he said these things, Jesus was deeply disturbed and testified, I assure you, one of you will betray me. He, he just, his disciples looked at each other confused about which of them he was talking about. One of the disciples, the one whose, 
whom Jesus loved, was at Jesus' side. Simon Peter nodded at him to get him to ask Jesus who he was talking about. Leaning back towards Jesus, this disciple asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread once I have dipped into the bowl. Then he dipped the piece of bread and gave it to Judas, Simon Iscariot's son. After Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus told him, What you are about to do, do quickly. No one sitting at the table understood why Jesus said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus told him, go, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So when Judas took the bread, he left immediately, and it was night. When Judas was gone, Jesus said to him, now the human one has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify the human one in himself and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I'm with you for a little while longer. You will look for me, but just as I told the religious leaders, I also tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, so you also must love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples, when you love each other. Our next hymn is number 183, we led by the choir, What Wondrous Love Is This? Like Jesus' disciples, we have broken bread together. We have heard of the betrayal and suffering to come in the days ahead. You remember that at that end of that meal, Jesus took a common cup. He shared it with them, saying, Take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me.
This is the cup of love overflowing for you. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Full of awe and wonder, the friends ate the bread and shared the cup. They had been fed with stories and prayers and words and deeds, and now this most special bread and wine. Jesus and his friends sang a hymn before they went to the Mount of Olives. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Then Jesus looked at them lovingly, saying, Pray that you do not come into the time of trial. And moving away from them, about a stone's throw, he knelt down and he prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, but not my will, but yours be done. 
Then an angel from heaven appeared to him to give him strength. Stay with me. Remain here with me. Watch and pray. While he was still speaking, <clears throat> suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple, police, and the elders, who had come for him. Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. I have come into this world to see this by Hafiz. I have come into this world to see this. The sword drop from men's hands, even at the height of their arc of anger, because we have finally realized there is just one flesh to wound, and it is his, the Christ's, our beloved's. I have come into this world to see this. All creatures hold hands as we pass through this miraculous existence we share on the way to an even greater being of soul, a being of just ecstatic light, forever entwined and at play with God. I have come into this world to hear this. Every song the earth has sung since it was conceived in the divine's womb and began spinning from God's wish every song by wing and fin and hoof, every song by hill and field and tree and woman and child, every song of stream and rock, every song of tool and lyre and flute, every song of gold and emerald and fire, every song the heart should cry with magnificent dignity to know itself as God for all other knowledge will leave us again in want and aching. Only imbibing the glorious sun will complete us. I have come into this world to experience this, men so true to love they would rather die before speaking an unkind word, men so true their lives are God's covenant, the promise of hope. I have come into this world to see this, the sword drop from men's hands, even at the height of 
the arc of their rage, because we have finally realized there is just one flesh we can wound. Jesus chose to use his final hours to establish intimate and profound physical connections with his friends. In the midst of this connection, he offered a new commandment to love others as he loved us. This is not an abstract, sentimental love. This is a bread-breaking, foot-washing, messy love. We have visited the waters, we have nourished at the table, and now we go out into the world to live out Jesus's commandment. As we leave this place, may the presence of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer fill the nooks and crannies of our lives. Go in love. We go out together in love. Amen.